hello guys my name is success osatsu and welcome to my channel in this video i want to show you guys how to sew this style from start to finish if you're interested then do keep on watching i already created a video on how to draft the pattern for this style which i have uploaded on my channel already if you haven't watched that video then please go and watch that video first because that is going to be the basics for this video this is basically like a continuation like a part two the video will be linked in the description box and you can also go ahead and search my channel search for how to draft a corset with yoke and you'll find the video so these are the materials i'm going to be using in this video first is the lace i'm going to be using then i'm using a doll face for this i'm working with three yards of doll face and three yards of lace then purple tool nets and purple organza another important material that's going to be needed for this is nude nets as well as skin crepe make sure that is non-stretchy crepe um most tailoring stores should be selling skin crepe it's just 1200 per yard and then i'm going to be using red line boning and plastic boning for this i bought three yards of each and peplum stay for the peplum stay half yard should be enough and we have polyester crinoline and finally hay stay so that is all i'm going to be using for this video the first thing i'm going to do is modify my pattern this pattern i drafted it in a way that you can attach a zipper if you want to but for this style i don't want it to have a zipper i want it to have a loop at the back so i want to make um changes and i also want to extend the length of the corset because i want to sew an inbuilt corset for this video and not like the corsets that will be um sewn to the skirt i don't know if you guys get me but it's basically going to be an inbuilt corset the corset will extend down to the hips and then the skirt will be on top of the corset so to extend the length of my corset for the front pattern i've gone ahead to join both sides already using a paper tip so after doing that i'm just going to add brown paper on top of it like this and then attach both of them together but then extend my length what i have here is 18 inches so i want to extend the corset length to 22 inches and for to do that i'm going to add four inches to the length of my corset and i'm just going to connect connect this together make sure that you take your hip measurements at the corset length and then just add the normal two inch sewing allowance for this i'm using two inches sewing allowance so i'm going to extend that line from the corset length straight to the natural waist and then i'm just going to draw a line that's separating the center front from the side front here i'm just taking measurements to make sure that the line is straight and then i can just like cut everything out so i went ahead to cut this part out where i couldn't get that on camera now we're going to move on to the back of the pattern i'm also going to extend this by another four inches to make it 22 inches don't forget your zipper allowance that is if you are working with um a zip for this style and then i'm going to take my hip measurements that's 40 divided by four giving me 10 and add my two inch sewing allowance now i'm going to go ahead and just connect this to my natural waist and then i'm going to extend my bust span line so that i can go ahead and extend the dart remember that when you're taking in darts for a blouse you're going to go up by one inch first and then connect the darts i'm going to go ahead and cut out this pattern that is all of the modification that i'm going to be doing for this pattern after cutting it out i'm going to curve the hemline of both the front pattern and the front pattern a bit so i'm going to come up by one inch and then draw a line from that point to meet the hemline and i'm just going to cut that out so guys the corset i'm doing for this style is an inbuilt corset and i want it to have a loop at the back for that reason i'm not going to be needing the zipper allowance so what i'm going to do is fold, is folding the zipper allowance 
so i'm going to just fold in the zip allowance then after folding in the zip allowance i still have to shorten the center back to make space for the loop so i'm going to go in by two inches at the chest line and mark 1.5 inch at the hemline you can use three inches for this that's still going to be okay but for this i'm using two inches i actually recommend three inches that way you have like a wider gap for the loop so after marking out the two inch and the 1.5 inch i'm going to fold in the pattern again so because i'm going to be using a loop at the back i don't see the need of putting in the dart at the back this is just my personal preference you can still put a dart at the back but you have to shift the dart a bit if you want to do that but for me i won't be using this dart so that one inch dart allowance i'm going to take it out at the waistline so i'm just going to mark that one inch and then draw a line to meet the one inch mark but i won't be cutting it out in the pattern but when i want to cut on my fabric i will make the adjustment so the next thing i want to adjust now is the yoke for the back so the yoke for this back you can leave it like this if you want your back to be covered all you have to do is just like fix a button at the back like about 10 buttons should be enough depending on the size but for me i want an open back so i'm going to cut out the yoke i already drew a line already in the other video so i'm just cutting out that line that i drew you can make yours to not be as wide as this i adjusted the line as you can see because i realized that it was going to be too open at the back if i had cut it out the way i wanted to so i just adjusted it a bit so that my back will be covered a bit more and i'm going to cut it out so this is all for the yoke at the back i'm just going to keep that piece of paper outside and when i want to reuse the pattern i can reattach it after cutting it out this is what the back pattern is going to look like and this is what i have for the front pattern so what i'm going to do now is cut all of this on my fabric as you can see i have cut everything out on my fabric i didn't want to make this video too long so i had to just cut everything off camera but if you guys want a longer video showing all of the details please let me know in the comment section but here i'm just going to explain everything that i have cut so that you guys will understand what i'm doing so let's start with the back pattern for the back pattern i cut the yoke on my nude net and this is in four places um let's say this is a set of two the first set is to complete the back and the second set is the lining and i just added the same allowance all round and as you can see i extended the curve for the back a bit because i wanted it to be covered a bit more and then i cut the bodies for the back in four places as well that's two sets and the first set i ironed estate to it while the other set i did not iron estate to it so the one that has estate attached to it is what the lace is going to be on top so you know that the lace is um transparent so i have to use double face to cover it up so this is how i'm going to place it then the other one is now going to be the lining that will be used to turn the lace as you can see so that's how it's going to be so that's all for the back pattern So for the front pattern, I cut this on fold and this is in two places. The first one is for the front and the other is for the lining. And I just added half an inch sewing allowance in the neckline, the armhole, the shoulder points and the chest line as well. So um, this is just it for the front yoke. And then I went ahead to cut my bodies. For the corset, as you can see, I did not divide the pattern into two i just cut it as one piece so i cut this on my nude crepe first of all making sure that i notch that midpoint that should have been divided if i had cut two separate pieces and then i ironed straight to it since this is going to be like the front part of the corset and then i also cut this on dull face this dull face is going to serve as the lining 
Now I want this script to have a natural look, the corsets to have a natural look. So I also went ahead to cut this on my nude net, which is what I'm going to place over the crepe and to make it look more natural and blend well with the yolk. For the cup, I have two sets, each set for each of the um, bra cup. So the first set, I cut my doll face in two places. The first is going to serve as the lining and the second one will be the interfacing for the lace. The one which is going to be the facing for the lace, I ironed straight to it while the other one is going to serve as the lining piece. So meaning that I have just the same way I cut for the back piece. I have the lace, doll face for interfacing and the doll face for lining. That's the same way I cut for the bra cup. For the corset cup, I'm going to pad it using wording. I'm not using a ready-made bra cup for this style. And here I'm using the lightest, that's the softest wording because that's the only one I have available. Because I know that this soft wording, I won't be able to use just one piece. I'm going to triple it. So I'm going to cut my three piece out, which I'm going to fuse together using my hemming gum. If you're using the medium or hard wording, you might need just one piece. But since this is what I'm working with, I'm going to fuse this together using my hemming gum. So this is what I have after ironing everything together. And I'm just going to cut out my corset cup. Make sure that you notch the bust points for your corset cup because that's going to serve as a guide when you're sewing everything together. I'm also going to make sure that I notch this wording so that when i'm sewing it together i'll be able to mark my bust point so just take that into consideration when cutting out your corset cup or even a bustier always notch the bust point so this is what the wording looks like as you can see it's looking very thick like it's not even obvious i fused three pieces of wording together so here i'm just marking out my bust points so that i won't make any mistake when i'm joining the pieces together Another thing I forgot to mention is that you should please add your sewing allowance where you need to add it. If you pay attention to the way I've been like placing my patterns on my fabric, you will see that there's half inch allowance on some like on the hem inside the inner cup part and around the cup as you can see. So make sure that you place that else your fitting is going to be off. So this corset is going to have boning casing of course and if you want to cut out your boning casing there are so many ways to actually do this but for me i want to create a bias which i'm going to use for my boning channel and when you're cutting a bias you can't cut straight if not it's not going to lay flat when you're sewing it to anything so you have to use the triangle part of the fabric you can see where i place my fabric on the table right that's how you have to place your fabric on the table when cutting a bias and for this i'm just marking out one inch i'm marking out um a lot of this because i'm going to be needing about seven boning channels and then i'm also going to need some for hemming the edge of my corset but for the one i'm going to use to hem the edge of my corset i'm using 1.5 inch and not one inch so just cut out the bias and then iron it like the way a bias looks like when you open it up so this is the one that i'm using for hemming my corset i was just showing you guys how it's going to be all right so now that i've explained everything that i've cut for this corset we are going to proceed to sewing the pieces together let's start with the back pattern so for the back pattern we are going to start with joining the lace to the door face that's the one that has the interfacing on it so that we can now work with the lining so the lace is transparent i don't want it to be transparent which is why i cut the door face for it so i'm just going to place the lace on top of the door face and run a top stitch i'm not going to be turning this or placing right sides together and then turning it afterwards i'm just going to place wrong side on the right side of the door face the wrong side of the lace the right side of the door face and then stitch this so here i was explaining that i'm going to use a bias to create a boning channel for the back 
because if you don't have boning at the back of your corset it's going to collapse when you wear it so i just placed my bias at the back of the corset but i ended up not even using this because it was too close to where i was going to place my eyelet but when you are placing this bone in journal try to take it out a bit more than i did here so i'm just going to go ahead and sew this down also note that i'm sewing this boning channel to the doll face only i'm not stitching this on the lace as well so after sewing the boning channel to the doll face i will top stitch the lace and the doll face together so i'm just demonstrating here that i want to sew the lace to the doll face So guys, after doing that, the next thing that I'm going to work on is the yoke for this corset. So here I'm just removing all of the pins and then I'm going to arrange the yoke for both the front and the back on the table so I can explain what's next. So for the yoke, I'm just going to pin everything down for both the back and the front and then for the front piece i'm going to go ahead and stitch the neckline and the armhole excluding the shoulder and the chest line for the back i'm going to sew the neckline this curved part and the armhole as well after turning it then i'll top stitch the chest line for both the front and the back and also the shoulder points so that's it for the yoke. I'm just going to set this aside and explain how I'm going to sew the rest of the front piece. So let's start with the corset cup. The dolphin serves as the interfacing for the lace. So I'm going to place the lace on the dolphin. That's the one that have clothes they ironed to it. And then I'm going to stitch it together. Then I'm going to stitch the wording together separately. Here I'm just pinning the lace and the doll face together and then this is the lining. I'm also going to go ahead and sew the lining together separately making sure that the both points are aligned. So the first piece is the lining, the second piece is the wording and the third piece is the lace and doll face together. Now it's time for the crepe part of this corset. Over here, I'm going ahead to draw my boning channel. This one you can freestyle it to whatever taste you want. You can use ju do just three boning channels, but I want to have a very cinch look, so I'm doing about seven boning channels. The first boning channel is right in the middle, and this other two is in the points that should have been the joining. If I had cut my corset in two places so i'm just making sure that that point is notched properly so that i won't miss it and then that's where the other two lines came from and then the rest of them i just placed it how i wanted it to be so this is completely up to you but this is what i'm doing for my own corset i've gone ahead to iron the bias which i cut out earlier and that's what i'm going to be placing on this corset so for this style i'm sewing the bias to the crepe before placing the nude net over it but you can decide to place the nude net on the crepe before sewing the boning channel but for me this is what i'm doing in this video so i'm going to go ahead and sew this down to the crepe before working with the net that should be placed on top of it. I hope you guys get what I'm trying to explain. Feel free to ask any questions in the comment section. So I'm going to take all of these pieces to my sewing machine and sew everything together. That's everything that I just explained for the front pattern. So when I'm sewing my yoke, I'm going to use a piece of brown paper. That's because it's a tool net. And if you don't have a piece of brown paper under the sewing machine, 
it's going to get stuck or the stitch will not come out right so here is me trying to sew my yoke together and as you can see i'm using a piece of brown paper you can also use ordinary paper for this just place it under and sew it you can see that the net is not folding in and the needle is not dragging the net i'm just working freely so this is a tip if you are working with two nets So I've gone ahead to sew everything off camera. As you can see, I've sewn the crosshairs cup together. This is the one I'm going to use for the lining. And this is the front part. You can see that I sewed the wording and the lace separately. I'm just going to top stitch that together. And then I have my yoke here as well. As you can see, I've sewn everything and I've ironed it flat. So now we're going to move on to the next step. For this crepe, I've sewn the boning channel to it so what i want to do now is place the nude net over the crepe just like this you can see that it has made everything look more natural i don't know if you can see what i'm saying but it just looks more um it's just blending more so i'm going to pin this down and mind you i'm not going to stitch the hemline yet i'm only going to work the sides and where i'm going to be placing the cups because i still have to put in my boning so i'm going to go ahead and stitch all of that down and then i'm going to top stitch my lace to the wording after top stitching it i'm going to place it the cup i'm going to attach the cup to the corset making sure that that joining is going to be aligned with the place that i notched okay so make sure that those two parts are aligned i'm just going to set this aside and work on the lining for the front part of the corset so the lining for the front part is just the doll face and nothing really extra is going to be going on here i'm just going to attach the cup to the lining making sure that the notched points align with the joining of the corset cup okay so that is all for the front and now for the back we already have the lace joined with the doll face that's the interfacing for the lace and have the lining aside so now we have to join everything together so while joining this together we also have to insert the yoke so this is me inserting the yoke the yoke has to be in between the lace and the lining just pay attention to the way I'm placing this in between my fabric. So the way I placed my yoke now, by the time I top stitch everything all around and I turn the lining, the yoke is going to be right in the center and like I won't have any rough edges. So I'm just placing it like this. Then I'm going to place the lining on top of the yoke. Meanwhile, this is um right sides facing each other so the right side of the lining is facing the right side of the lace so i'm just going to take all of this to my sewing machine and stitch it down and i'll be right back so guys we already halfway through this tutorial already i know that there are some things that i'm not really showing in this video and that's because i'm trying to make sure the video is not too long and despite my attempts to even make the video short it's still 45 minutes long so let's just move on to the next stage please just pay close attention i'm not going to show the sewing process of everything but i'm going to explain every single thing that i'm doing for this corset so as you can see i've gone ahead to sew everything and iron it down and the back part is looking very neat in and out and this is the front as well I've gone ahead to attach the cup to the crepe part of the corset and now we have to attach the yoke for the front as well. So the yoke is also going to be attached using the same technique I used for the back. I'm going to place the yoke like this making sure that the midpoint of the yoke and the midpoint of the corset is aligned. 
it's okay if there's excess at the armpits part of this yoke we can just easily trim it off like i did so i'm going to pin this together when i was pinning the back i pinned the yoke and the lining together but this front part is more tricky because of that curve in the center so i'm going to pin the yoke first of all before i pin the lining to the front part to the outer part of the corset so this is me explaining how i'm going to sew everything down so i'm going to top stitch the neckline and the sides not the hemline i decided to attach the yoke for the front separately before attaching the lining because of how tricky it is to join everything together so i have some excesses at the sides which i'm going to trim off okay so now i'm going to just attach the lining to this so i'm going to place the lining and make sure that the center points align another trick is to start sewing from the center point for one side and then go on and continue the other side rather than, rather than starting from the edge so that way you can identify any error and quickly correct it so i'm attaching a modesty panel to this corset and this is just to me showing you guys the piece that i've cut out for the modesty panel for the wideness of the modesty panel i just cut out 17 inches in width and made this one inch shorter than the center back of my corset and i'm going to be folding this in half just like this as you can see and i'm just going to show you guys how i'm going to attach everything because i know that this is a bit tricky so please pay close attention to what i want to show you and also don't forget to iron sd to your modesty panel so this is my modesty panel i've gone ahead to sew the sides down and here i'm just closing up the edge and leaving a little bit of space and it's from that space that i'm going to turn this out so i just top stitch that area which i left open for turning the modesty panel and now i'm going to attach this to my corset so in the process of attaching this modesty panel i'm also going to create a space for my eyelet the eyelet is usually in between two boning so we have to create two boning channels for the eyelet to be in between so this modesty panel i'm going to place it like this first of all you can see that it's facing the side of the of one side of the back of this corset and i'm going to stitch this down first of all so i'm going to stitch this from the back actually so that i will not be confused i am recording this because i feel like i will not be able to explain this with my mouth but you can watch what i'm doing so when i'm explaining also pay attention to how i'm sewing this so i've pinned the modesty panel down and i'm just going to stitch this down this modesty panel is about 1.5 inch away from the center back so half inch for one side half inch for the other side and the other half inch will be in between for the eyelids so i'm going ahead to stitch this down like this now we have one part now i'm going to turn the modesty panel the other way facing the center back and not the side this time then from that first stitch i'm going to go out by half of an inch and then run another stitch down doing this has created one boning channel already because i have half of an inch space already for one of my boning channel and then i'm going to pass my plastic boning through that so as you can see the modesty panel is sitting seamlessly with one side of the back of this corset there are no rough edges and the joining is not really showing so this is just me demonstrating me passing the boning through this first casing that i have created okay so like this i've attached the modesty panel that's really all about it and i'm just going to go ahead and run another stitch half inch away from the center back and with that i have created the other part for the boning to pass through and this center points will be for my eyelids okay okay you notice that for the second one i did not sew it on the modesty panel you have to take that away before sewing it down so this is what i have okay this is what i have so i'm just going to go ahead and iron all of this down look at how neat it is in and out 
so this is just how to attach a modesty panel there are many ways to do this but this is my own approach for now okay and then for the other side of the back i just created the channels like that without the modesty panel of course you know the modesty panel should be attached to just one side so this is what i have now what i want to do is create the eyelet for the back and i don't have an eyelet plier i don't have any special tools for creating an eyelet i'm just going to cut out the eyelet hole i'm not going to be fixing the eyelet yet i'm just cutting out the hole and the reason why i'm doing this is because it's going to be difficult to create the hole after putting in my plastic boning so before putting in the plastic boning i'm just going to use my scissors to cut this out you can see the way i folded this fold this into four and then cut out a very tiny hole not too wide so that you can expand this as needed okay so i used the distance of 1.5 inch between each of the eyelets so this is a very easy way to cut out your eyelet hole i just folded this this way and then the other way and then any small cuts will just give me a really nice round hole if that makes sense okay so i'm just going to do this for both sides of the back of this corset so this is what i have i've gone ahead to cut all of this out and create the eyelet hole now the next thing is to insert the boning for the front and the back parts of this corset so because this is an in corset and i want to be able to stitch on the corset i used a red line boning for this that's um boning that can be stitched that's what i used for this corset but i just advise you guys to use the plastic boning and then when you're stitching it down when you get to the plastic boning you just skip that part and continue sewing because when i finished sewing this corset the boning was bending and I realized that it was because I only used one red line boning and it extended all the way to my hips. So all of the tension just made it bend. So just keep that in mind. I've gone ahead to cut out the boning for each of the boning channel and I used fire to melt the edge. It's very important that I melt the edge of the boning because if I don't do that, it's going to poke me and it can tear the fabric. So you either use fire to melt it place a tape over it or you file it down that's the VC plastic boning so i'm making sure that the curved part of this boning is facing upwards okay so also keep that in mind when inserting your boning and this is what i have for the back i'm using a plastic boning and not a red line boning since i won't be stitching that part down okay and the plastic boning will make it more firm so I'm just going to measure what I want for the back and cut this out. Then I'll go ahead and also melt this and insert it at the back of the corset. After I've done that, the next thing I want to do is hem the edge of my corset. Remember the 1.5 inch bias I cut earlier in this video? That's what I'm going to be using now. So I want the bias to be showing on the outer part of the corset. So I'm going to start working from the back of the corset. So I'm just going to place the bias on the edge of the corset and stitch it down using about half of an inch all round. Then I'll just cut off the excess leaving a little bit extra so that I'll fold it in and then continue sewing it down. After sewing this, I'm going to turn it the other way around and then fold in this bias with about half of an inch and then stitch this down okay so just watch what i'm doing closely So this is what I have after I'm done and I'm going to go ahead and do the same for the remaining two pieces of this corset that's the front and the other half of the back of this corset and I'm going to iron this flat so this is what I have and I've gone ahead to just join the sides together using the 1.5 inch sewing allowance which I added earlier 
and i've fixed some of the eyelets but i just want to show you guys a video of how to fix an eyelet without the eyelet machine so there's the flat one and there's one part of this that is like high up a bit okay so the part that is high up you're going to pass it through the front of the corset through the front of the eyelet hole and a simple trick i like to, a, sim a trick i like to do is use a little bit of glue around it before placing this inside the hole that i have created to give it a little bit of extra hold since i'm not using the machine for it so i'm just going to press this in then the flat one i will place it at the back through the other one that i put on the front and then i have this plier here but you can use the scissors for this then i'm going to use and um, pull out the one which i passed through from the front that's the one that is a bit high up I'm just going to spread it out like this. So after spreading it out, I'll use my hammer to just beat it down lightly, not too hard, so that the eyelet will not deform. And I'm just going to repeat this for the rest of the eyelet holes, which I have not fixed yet. So I fixed all of the eyelets together and I'm almost done with this corset. The hard part is over. So I'm just going to set this aside and work on the bottom part of this style. So now I want to cut out this skirt. I'm just working with a basic skirt pattern that I already have. And I folded the pattern to stop at above my knee, about 2 inches above my knee. And then I'm just measuring the length of the skirt. This length is from my half length down to where I want the skirt to end. This is about 2 inches below my ankle. Okay, you can just like stand on tiptoe and take your measurements. And then let the tape reach the surface of the floor and you get your full length measurement. That's where when you put on heels, it's going to, the skirt will still be long. Okay so i just have my basic skirt pattern here so it's a mermaid gown that i'm sewing which means i'm going to need some space at the side to create that flare effect by just coming out from the sides a bit so because i'm working with just three yards of fabric i won't be able to um use a lot of inches for this so i'm going to work with just seven to eight inches okay so if i had more fabric i would have used about 10 inches 15 or even 20 inches so i just used my ruler to identify the straight part of the skirt and then from that point i came out by about 7 inches and i'm just using my chalk to mark this out so this is a very quick and easy way to cut out your mermaid skirt i'm just using my scissors to cut this out mind you this is on fold for the front so now i'm working on the back part for the back part i had a little extra fabric so i'm not starting from the center of the folding okay i'm not starting from the edge of the folding i came out a bit more so that i can have a little tail at the back and as you can see i opened up the zipper allowance that i did not open up when cutting the front so the only difference between the back and the front is that I'm adding zipper allowance and there's a little tail at the back and of course this won't be cut on fold. So over here I'm just cutting everything out and then I'm going to go ahead and trace this on my door face as well. So I made the lining to be exactly the length of the lace that's because I'm going to hem the lining using number 1 inch or 1.5 inch so the lining is going to end up being 1.5 inch shorter to sew these pieces together i'm going to top stitch the lining to the lace i'm not going to use the doll face to turn the lace because i noticed that when i do that sometimes it's usually like shifts a bit out of place so i just placed 
the, the lace and the doll face flat on the floor pinned it down i'm going to go and stitch this down so before stitching this down i'm going to just hem the edge of the lace okay so it's after hemming the edge of the lace that i'm going to go ahead and top stitch all of these pieces down after top stitching i'll take in my dart i did not take the dart separate from the lace because if i do that it's going to be showing so i'm going ahead to take in the dart and top stitch the door face to the lace and i'm just arranging the pieces together okay that folding is as a result of the little tail at the back so I'm just going to pin the back and the front of the skirt together, facing right sides together. So I'm going to sew the edges down using the sewing allowance of 1.5 inch I have on the pattern. And then I'm going to leave about 7 inches for my zip and also fix the zipper. This is how it fits after I've sewn the skirt and I've sewn the corset. I have not fixed the button for the yoke yet, so this is just what I have. I created a loop to go with the corset. Now what I want to do is create the basque effect. To cut out the basque waistline, I'm just using my chalk to mark the midpoint of my waist. And then from there, I'm going to mark about 4 inches down and connect this back to the half length I didn't really measure this I just eyeballed this so just pay attention to the way I'm cutting mine out okay I eventually use my tape rule to measure what I have making sure that what I'm cutting on both sides are equal okay so this is just me measuring it After making the division and the waistline, whatever you have that is a bit collapsed on the skirt is what you are going to be trimming out. So this is just an easy way to trim out a basque waistline. Of course, you can just use a chalk to chalk this out, but this is how I'm cutting mine out. And as you can see, the basque waistline is showing. I decided to just go down a bit more. So after cutting out the basque waistline, I'm just going to use my pin to pin this down to the corset. Then take this to my sewing machine and stitch it down like you would attach a bodice to a skirt. So I ended up just using a chalk here as well because it's scattered when I was trying to take off the corset and the skirt. At this point, I'm pinning the skirt to the corset so that I can stitch this down on my sewing machine and I'm going to stop about an inch or two before the eyelids. An inch is okay. Okay, I'm just giving you guys a range here. So I'm pinning this down and I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and sew. And this is what I have. For this rough edge, I'm going to use a bias to hem it. Note that while I was fixing the zip, I allowed this so when I fixed the zip I also sewed that part that does not really have the zip thingy I don't know what to call it with it so I can fold this in and it I will still have my zipper stop where I want it to stop okay so I'm going to go ahead and fold that in and use hemming gum to just keep it in place while I tack it and this is just me demonstrating that I'm going to use a bias to hem this rough edge of the skirt. After doing all of that, the corset is almost ready. All I have to do is fix the sleeve for it. So I'm doing a long sleeve on one side and I'm doing a standing sleeve for the other side. I'm not going to show the video of that here, okay? So I'm going to do a separate video on how to fix a standing sleeve and that's going to be uploaded in my next video. So this is just me cutting out the long sleeve which I'm going to attach to my corset. And I went ahead to cut out some applique which I'm going to be using to also embellish this corset. 
so stay tuned for a tutorial on how to make this 3d applique you can see and also how to cut out these ones and a tutorial on how to fix a standing sleeve which i'll be uploading within the next two weeks one for each week or i might just upload both of them next week do let me know how you want me to upload them in the comment section so this is all for this video thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one bye